again, friends, and welcome to another fine edition of 151. I'm Adam, and I'm joined by a man who doesn't listen to the enter at your own risk sign. I do not. They call him the Justin. Thank you, sir. You can follow us on Twitter at 151theshow or on Facebook, facebook.com slash 151theshow. So it's been a little bit since we uh, since we recorded, and a little bit's happened since a that bit. time. A couple seen a couple movies. movies. A couple movies come out. Things have... People have done stuff, and other people have done other stuff. Well put. Thank you. Well put. Just because you have a new microphone doesn't mean... Yeah, and I got a new microphone, yeah. Doesn't mean you cannot talk into it. Correct. I just cannot... So anyways, I'm talking over here, then I'm talking over here. Ooh. Anyways, uh, no, uh, a couple movies have come out. Come out of the summer blockbusters, if you will. Uh, Warcraft, which I saw, which is... (laughs) That good. No. <laughs> made like a billion dollars in China. Like I, yeah, it, we're it, getting Warcraft too. Oh, uh, you knew we were getting that, and we'll probably get Warcraft three as well. Probably. But the problem with it is, is, and I don't want to get too far into the movie reviews because we have something more important to talk about here. But uh, it's just, it's like no, none of the humans gave a crap about acting. Like uh, uh, Dominic Cooper mm-hmm. as the king. It is the worst performance I've ever seen him give. Wow! At one point, the ogres that are CGI are better actors than anybody on the screen. That's that's impressive. And both from a CGI front and the fact that you know Duncan Jones, Jones. I don't know. Yeah, the the guy who the guy who did Moon. Okay. Uh, with Sam Rockwell, which was an amazing movie. If you've never seen Moon, see Moon, two thousand and nine. I find it hard to believe that he would have. You know, let a piece of crap like that go out. He, it's just like if you're a Warcraft fan of any any type, you're going to get a little bit of enjoyment out of it. Seeing you know some of the you know like the portal, the towns, yeah. the, you know that kind of stuff. But at one point, Dominic Cooper puts on this helmet, and it's so laughably bad that it's like, what, what am I looking at? <laughs> you can't hurt me. I'm wearing my cheese helmet. There's not a lot of great in that movie. Yeah, I mean, like I said, if you're a fan of fan of it, you're gonna enjoy it a little bit just for seeing it. And yeah, just for seeing the stuff and and on up on the big screen. It's like at one like midway through the movie, it's like they just completely give up. They give up on story. They give up on fighting. They give up just kind of on everything. Hmm. It's like okay. See, and do you think that's? Do you think it's just because, you know, just like the, the Star Wars prequels, there's just so much CGI that that it actually went the other way, that we shouldn't have used humans at all? We just should have, the whole thing should have been CGI? Maybe. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's, okay, it's, you know how we always have the conversation, it's like, oh, we don't need another origin story, oh, we mm-hmm. don't need... Oh, I can't believe they're putting all this information back in and so on. They did none of that in this movie. Like, even as someone that's played the game and been a part of it for a long time, there are parts of that movie that I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. Well, because as playing the game, you you don't necessarily have, you know, the 47, you know, pages of backstory that they want you to know even in-game. Yeah. I mean, which was something during the time period that I played, uh... I would struggle with from time to time because they would reference something. Oh, it was was the third great human dynasty of blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I, where does, I don't know what you're talking about. There's none of this, you know, if it hasn't been in game, I haven't, I don't know it. So, uh, so if you're a Warcraft fan, I, I go see it. It's neat to see, but you know, other than that, it's not a great movie. Okay. The other one that's even more disappointing, and I almost had to go see it because someone told me how bad it was, Independence Day Resurgence. Yeah. You remember, okay, and this is, I, I, like, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this one either, but you remember how uh, we had the discussion that A Force Awakens is pretty much just a new hope? Yeah. Okay. Just a retread. They're hitting the same beats. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the, exactly what Independence Day Resurgence is, except there's no heart in it. You don't care about any of the of the people in it, mm-hmm. and it's just like two hours. You're just kind of sitting there waiting for. Well, I guess we're gonna win. Hoorah. Like in the in the first movie, there was a little, you know there was the fun of man, they might win. Man, they wiped out the White House. Man, they did this. It's like we cared about the characters. I mean, the the president's wife died. Yeah. Um. You know, he was he was just reeling off of 
you know, um, basically a weak president with bad decisions, and the only thing that he need need that he knew how to do in the way they set him up was he had been, you know, a, a war hero. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, he sucked. So it was, it was, you know, we we actually cared about this guy because he just kept repeatedly getting kicked in the nuts. There, there was a point. Remember the real big speech they gave, mm-hmm. or he gave in it. Yeah. Uh, he tried. It, it essentially does the same thing again, and it's just you sit there and you just don't care. Like at one point, I'm like, man, can the aliens just win? It just falls flat. Yeah. It just yeah. it it that that's the best way I can describe. It. There's no heart or soul in this movie at all. Yeah, and 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 that guy wants to go back and reboot Stargate again. Great. Great. <laughs> and they set it up. It's like you know how there's always like the question, oh, are they setting up for a third one? They blatantly just come out and say we're setting up for a third one. Nice. And it's it's like okay, if Brent Spiner in it, the only thing he's ever been good at is Data. That's it. Um, like he is like laughably bad in this movie. Yeah. Over just, the top crazy? Just over the top. At one point he says sick bay. So it's kind of like, oh, Star Trek yes. You know? But other than that, it's like, man. I... <laughs> they, they call it that in the Navy, too. But still. I mean, it's Brent Spiner saying sick bay. Yeah. So he, he wakes up from a 20-year coma. Yeah. After they, like, killed him in the first one. Explicitly went over and checked the pulse and said he's dead. And then nobody paid him any attention again in the first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there you have that. Those are a couple of the movies I've seen since... Uh, since uh, we last recorded, but Does the big anything one. Else even come out? Um, boy, I don't know. I don't think so. Nothing crazy good or anything like that. I saw. I haven't seen anything. Neither in the have I. That's the problem. <laughs> um, uh, I saw Zootopia with Kid. Yeah, was that any good? Hey, hey. It's a little, 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 little preachy about you know how we should all cohabitate oh. and etc. Yeah, I got. Little, little, uh, little heavier-handed message there than what I was expecting. That's kind of all those Pixar movies and stuff anymore. Well, like I mean, you get to the end and there's some big life lesson for everybody. This one was pretty much, yeah, like the harder rap than any. I mean, because I mean, Cars, Cars really doesn't have a message. Yeah, it does. What's there's the... always trunk space. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> but. Some of the, yeah, that that one was was definitely a little a little preachy. Okay, you know, the other big thing that has come out and um, it has to do with fan films. Now we saw I don't know if you guys have seen, but uh, there was a really great Star Wars one that came out, the Darth Maul one. I never saw that one. Really, it's no. like the Darth Maul movie that everybody wanted. It's Darth Maul, and it's really well done, like just beating the piss out of a bunch of Jedi. Excellent. In the middle of the woods, it's it's great. I'll send you a link or okay. put one in this. But, um, no, there's been a big hubbub from CBS and Paramount for Star Trek fan films. And fan films are, are nothing new. No. I mean... Um, Especially nowadays with YouTube and just all the other... How easy it is to film something. I mean, look, we're filming in my basement. Well, and... and um, on three cameras. I'm trying to think of the... Uh, with professional microphones. Yes, look at that thing. The the one that really got everything started uh, was a, uh, it was like the third season. You know, the, the the they were making up for the third season. Um, God, I think it's these are the voyages or. Well, Axonar is the one that kind of re- the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, which is. But uh, I mean, they've had Star Trek Renegades with Tim Russ and Garrett Wang, and I mean, there's like a whole bunch of uh, the one that I'm talking about, which is original series. They had uh, Walter Koenig, because they had an episode where Chekhov was aged. Mm -hmm. So they had a kid, you know, the kid who played Chekhov, and then they actually got Walter Koenig to come in and play old Chekhov when he was, you know, supposed to be the the age that Walter Koenig is now. Um, And they had some, like, they were getting original props that they they were getting to use in this. And it's been great. Everybody's liked it. They've had, you know, so many Star Trek actors involved in these and doing these. Uh, And for some reason, um, CBS and Paramount got a little litigious here. It's money. Over over Axonar. That's all it it is. It's money. And you have, have like, uh, Axonar, you have the prelude to it, which is essentially about the Klingon War, right? Garth Uh, of Izar, Izar, however you pronounce that, pre-Kirk stuff. 
you got the dude that played uh, Saval from uh, uh, Enterprise. Enterprise. You've yep. got the dude that played Martok from Deep Space Nine. Yep. Uh, who's the other guy in this? Uh, oh, uh, I'll find his name in a minute. But anyways, I mean, it goes through, and it, it's a great idea. It's a great concept for a fan film. And what makes it even better is it's so well done. Like, the special, of, like, you watch it, and you don't think, wow, this this is kind of a joke, or why am I watching I mean, it's a good story. Because there are, you know, people doing this, and I think this is where CBS and Paramount really got their, their panties in a wad over it, is because you had professionals doing this and and not almost using it as a as a resume card yeah you know well it should that, be hey look look at look at what we did yeah and you know more power to them because they're just trying to make a buck well but it's not like there are so many elements of of that stuff like cbs and paramount did not completely develop the klingon language yeah. you know that was that was people. Uh, there's been so much stuff that they have appropriated from the fans over the years, yeah. And so much stuff that that they have, you know, uh, just like the animated series that that the fans that were keeping it alive were writing it yeah. and submitting it and sending it in, and then that stuff became canon. And then CBS and Paramount has made millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars be- by appropriating fan stuff. And when the fans said, "Hey, we want to use some of this back." Suddenly they got all litigious and said, oh, no. Oh, no. We can't possibly do that. A couple weeks ago, a month ago now, uh, there was a uh, a speech and J.J. Abrams said, hey, this is this is going away. And as it turns out, what, what the directions on his teleprompter was, ad-lib something about the lawsuit, which... Ad-lib something. That's always a great thing. From a legal standpoint, ad-libbing something about a lawsuit, I can't believe that ever... But that's the story they're saying. And I I don't know whether somebody's trying to cover an ass now or what the deal is, but that's what they're saying. Yeah. Uh, That J.J. kind of spun that out of, you know, nothing. Yeah. Um, Or was incorrect based on the information that he had at the time. Real quick, the uh, you talk about the the fan theory or uh, the fans coming up with stuff. Did you hear the story about Beyond? There was something that Simon Pegg they contacted uh, Memory Alpha, mm-hmm. which is essentially a Wikipedia yeah. site for Star Trek, run by the fans, to come up with yes. something for the movie. And I can't remember what it was. If it was like a, 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 a ship or yeah something, but you know they to had get, fans right. Yeah, because they it, had fans come up with it. Yes, because it was a it was a. The reference off a of, off of fan creation. Exactly. This is the kind of crap that I'm talking about. It's always been a give and take. So, here we go. We got uh, the guidelines for if you want to make a Star Trek fan film. Um, there are ten of them. We don't have to go through all of them or read them verbatim here, but uh, because you can find them linked and they're all over. Google search it, okay? Yeah, it's easy. Use the Google machine. StarTrek.com slash fan films. Yeah. So, like, the first one, I mean, it, it pretty much crushes any any... Any design of a great story. Yeah. Because it says the fan production must be less than 15 minutes for a single self-contained story. So that right there means you can't make a big story. You can't yeah. make something like uh, Axnar to you know really put together what some of yes. these are great stories. Because even even you can't do fi- you can't do four 15-minute chunks of a 60-minute arc. No. Uh, at most, the arc can be 30 minutes. So, uh, self-contained story or no more than two segments, episodes, or parts not to exceed 30 minutes total with no additional seasons, episodes, parts, sequels, or remakes. So you get you get 30 minutes of time and then you're done. Yeah. Because anything else would be a sequel, season, remake, whatever. So, here's the other one. Number- which, which means our stage play production of A Trouble with Tribbles is out. I know. Son of a... I worked or, on and our sequel, uh, where we do the DS9 one. I know it's crap. It was going to be the you know after credits type mm-hmm. thing, but no. Uh, then number two was the one that, I already had my spots painted to play Dax. I know you looked really good in the short uh, all the way. Uh, the title of the fan production or any parts cannot include the name Star Trek. However, and they actually literally have however in this. The title must contain a subtitle with a phrase, a Star Trek fan production, in plain typeface. So we don't want our name on it, 
but you have to put our name on it. You have to say it's a Star Trek fan production, thereby binding yourself to these rules. So they go through, and I mean, they've got all of them. Did any of other rooms? You can't use money to do it. You can't pay in excess of like what is it, fifty grand? You can't use any uh, recreations clips. Um, I think they even said props. Oh, and this is the one I love, number five. The fan production must be a real fan production, i.e. creators, actors, and all of the participants must be amateurs, cannot be compensated for their services, cannot be currently or previously employed on any Star Trek series, films, production of DVDs, or any of CBS or Paramount's pictures licenses, which means Tim Russ right now, who is doing a sequel to Star Trek Renegades, midway through right now, having played Tuvok, having been a, you know, active member no. uh, of... Hell, he was in uh, he was uh, in um, Undiscovered Country on the Excelsior. Yeah, you know he's been through multiple iterations. Uh, that's in violation of these right now. It's just it's like I'm it's sorry, asinine. I, it it really is. And here's the thing about it that I I think it's for the actors. It's like you know what? If you didn't want them to be a part of fan films, you should have put that in their contract. You should have put that if you're going to play this character again, it has to be an official Star Trek, you know, CBS, Paramount, whatever, mm-hmm. production. It, You know, that's your fault. Yep. That's your fault that you did that because it's like, okay, well, I'm supposed to go play a gig. It's a fan film. All they want, you know, they're going to yep. pay me. What's the problem? Yep. Here's the other thing that... Uh, I mean, that scenario led to one of the greatest Star Trek movies of all time, Galaxy Quest. <laughs> Galaxy Quest, highly underrated. It, it is it is one of the best Star Trek movies ever. It really is. You know what? I, I still have a question about. You know when they're going out of space dock, with the uh, what's the name of the ship? The uh, in- interceptor. I guess. No, uh, I could have told you until you asked me. Okay. Uh, Anyways, when they're going out and he scrapes the side, yeah, it's like it's it's impossible to scrape it in the way that they scraped it. It's like how did you do that? That's not even physically possible. No, you'd have to you'd have to spun the ship entirely. No, no but uh, here here's my biggest gripe with this. Any time that you alienate your fans from doing something or having fun with your product, the protector, the protector. That's yes. it. I thought it started with the, the NESA uh, protector. Okay. Any time you alienate your fans or cut them off from something they love, I think is a bad thing. Yes. It's like. All, all, all something like Axanar is, you know what that is? It's free advertising. Mm-hmm. That's the big thing. I mean, that's that's people spending their own money yep. using your name and doing... It's not like they're coming out and having, uh, you know, the dude that played uh, 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 Martok, like, you know, take some girl down to Pound Town or something. I mean, it's... And, it's spreading the word of your... And, and you can do that as long as you put on the, the title of Triple X Parody. Yeah, you can do that all you want, and that's legally protected. <laughs> the th- the thing is, and and this is what is the really to me the 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 slimiest, dirtiest part about this whole thing. I like number ten. Fan productions cannot create or imply any association or endorsement by CBS or Paramount Pictures. It's fan film. You didn't produce it. Yeah, there is no association. If there'd been association, you would have produced it. We 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 we're all smart enough to figure that out, but. CBS and Paramount Pictures reserve the right to revise, revoke, and or withdraw these guidelines at any time in their own discretion. Guidelines are not a license and do not constitute approval or authorization of any fan productions or a waiver of any rights that CBS or Paramount Pictures may have with respect to fan fiction created outside of these guidelines. So basically, we're putting these down. Uh, we can change them at any time. And if you make something, and because this isn't a license, or because we're just kind of throwing these out here, it still doesn't guarantee that we're not going to sue you anyway. Yeah, the that's kind of just from working in radio with how they do it, like changing the rules and doing all that. That's in like every contract, every yeah. you know. But yeah, I see what you're saying. It's just it's such a dick move by by CBS and Paramount. Don't say that, hey, these are the guidelines that, that we're going to, but we're not necessarily going to hold up to them because this You're is, doing a better job than we are. This is no different. Well, that's part of it. This is no different. Well, and, and they've got a new series coming out, so I'm which is going to be a web production. So, you know, they're streaming services. I'm sure that somebody looked at this and said, oh, we could get our asses kicked by a fan production. How good would that look? Yeah. Um, because they're, to me... They're just half-handing this. They're not. They're not actually willing to put it on the air. 
they apparently don't have that much faith in it and or just trying to get everybody to chalk up five ninety nine a month or whatever it's going to be for their for their streaming service i think they're going to be sorely disappointed no matter how good the the talent yeah. is behind it all that being said this to me is no different than amc telling uh the walking dead spoiler pages that oh if you guys get this right we may sue you. We're going to sue you. No. Uh, because, you know, there's 11 people there. So somebody is going to come up with the right solution. Yeah. You put it out there, it's going to, hey, they were right. You know, it's going to happen. There's a limited amount of possibilities. Somebody is going to get it right. I mean, that's just the way this crap works. Yeah. Somebody is going to have the Force Awakens, or not the, the next one, Star Wars 8. Yeah, which they just had a big leak of possible. Maybe. Yeah. Somebody's going to get it right. Okay, somebody through wild guessing is going to get it right. Well, it's like the... Uh, you cannot sue them after the fact. Did uh, did you see the thing about Game of Thrones a couple weeks ago? Mm -mm. That some some kid just jokingly predicted uh, something major about Hodor. And I don't know if you really want to know because you're reading the books, but... Well, I've... Yeah, I'm... I'm done. I mean, the, the, the shows are now, now past where the books are. Um, but anyways, like... Five years ago, this yeah. kid put put exactly what it was, and everybody was like, "Oh, holy, that's that, that's yeah. that's right." Oh. So, funny thing is, like, the day after that happened, uh -huh. uh, that had already been like spoiled for me. Yeah, <clears throat> which I mean, okay, I'd... no, pretty pretty ingenious. But that took, I think, a day, maybe forty eight hours for mm -hmm. that. Um, I just found out three days ago the big, I guess, spoiler end how things go down, or who doesn't make it out of Batman v Superman. Oh, really? Yeah, just like three days ago. Really? Yeah. Like, that movie has still not been spoiled for me all this time. Because nobody cares. Because nobody, because I was reading something on Justice League, and it's like, well, you know, uh, we have to, uh, you know, uh, it was a set thing, and they're like, well, Batman's, no. spoiler alert, Batman's bringing everybody together since Superman died at the end of Batman v yeah. Superman. And I'm like, what? Like, they went there? Yeah. It still, all this time, it had not been spoiled. Uh, How sad is that? Yeah. What's bad is, they like, he dies. I, I'm just going to flat out tell you. Okay. He dies, and then the very end of the film, they show his coffin getting covered with dirt, and it starts to shake, and dirt floats off it. Of course. So it's like, well, okay. Yeah. You kind of ruined that, guys. Couldn't, couldn't keep that... For five minutes. That, and I gotta tell you, I uh, we'll get back to the Star Trek thing, but I gotta tell you this. The other night I got to arguing with some guys about why uh, the DC Man of Steel and Batman and Superman are horrible. Mm -hmm. One, the dude said that Zack Snyder is the best director on the face of the earth. I hope you're not friends with this person. No, no, like I'm that. not. Okay. And then after an hour of going back and forth, I'm like, I'm sitting here trying to convince somebody that thinks Man of Steel is a good movie and Batman vs. Superman is a good movie. I'm like... I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. It's like, you win. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. So, no, I just, you know, back to the Star Trek thing, it's, it's bad. I mean, it, I, I wish I had a different way of saying it than that, but it's like, let, let your fans have fun with your product. No, because you just, you just paralyzed this. Because there is not a fan production out there that is going to be able to, like, if CBS says a cease and, sends a cease and desist letter and says, you're done, or we're going to sue you, yeah. even the threat of a lawyer bill just to get it in and just to get it, like, dismissed, yeah. you know, or to say, hey, we're not going to do it, just like, you know, what that that's the spoiler site for AMC, said, we can't even afford the threat of being sued, yeah. of what it's going to cost. We have to comply. I mean, it is just straight up. You, uh, strong arming. I mean, it is. There is no defense. You know, you would think like you. You have a product that's fifty years old, and you're going to be celebrating your fiftieth, right? You think that you would want people to celebrate your product, yeah, and celebrate how much they love it. And you know what? Okay, so you you don't want people. You, you don't want them being your mm -hmm. thing. Embrace it. That's always a bigger thing. Like, put a thing on StarTrek.com that's like, hey, check out this fan film. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Send us your... Star Wars did an entire recreation of the whole thing using the clips 
that people recreated the 30 second scene and they spliced them all together. That was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Yeah. They have their marketing game right. Yeah. CBS and Paramount are just ramming themselves in their own tuchus over this. They're just putting themselves in a corner and you're giving people a reason not to like your product. Exactly. You never that's kind of always the thing I think of. It's like you don't give someone a reason to bitch at you. Yes. And you know what? If okay, you don't like the fan films. Fine. They do. They're they're the ones who have the your money. If if somebody really is crossing the line, you go after them individually. Yeah, or you say be like, that no, Martok can't take that chick to Pound Town. <laughs> Get her on the F truck and take that's, her down to Pound Town. That's right. <laughs> I heard that somewhere. And I'm like, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard. <sighs> All right, so that pretty much covers the Star Trek stuff, right? I think so. I think we're both unhappy with it. I think uh, everybody should be unhappy with it. I think it's a completely asinine thing to do. Um, I'd like to know who came up with this stuff at CBS Lawyer. Paramount, and they should be fired. So, All right, with that, we have to wrap things up. You yep. can always follow us uh, on Twitter at 151theshow, on Facebook.com slash 15theshow. One five. I talk sometimes blah, 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 for blah, blah, a living. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but we can't end without a shameless plug. Oh, cat scared me. Uh, I would like to do the shameless plug this week. Okay. I would like yeah, to... You're not going to hit the music? Oh. Cue the music. <laughs> We've only been doing this for like a month. I know, right? <laughs> um, okay, what's your shameless plug? Okay, I would like everybody to go out and check out Prelude to Axanar. <laughs> that is my shameless plug. Go I've check had it, it out. playing in the background. Go, <laughs> go check out Prelude to Axanar. Go check out the um, the one that I couldn't remember earlier. Um, the, the Star Trek fan film that got it all started. Um... Uh, speaking of other fan films, uh, why Justin looks for his Star Trek New Voyages. New Voyages, okay. Yes, um, uh, basically like the the third season of Star Trek the original series. Um, it's kind of the granddaddy of them all. Go check it out. Go go enjoy these because CBS is gonna ruin it for us all. And if you uh, more of the Star Trek, uh, excuse me, Star Wars uh, side of things, uh, you can go check out the uh, Star Wars, the Darth Maul one. It's called Darth Maul Apprentice, a Star Wars film, and it's really well done. And it's him just beating the piss out of a bunch of. Uh, it's actually, Darth is that is that the guy who was the uh, who was actually Darth Maul? Isn't it? Uh, that I don't know. That I don't know off the top of my head. But we can research that, or you can do it yourself. I don't care. Oh, so. and the greatest fan film of all. Uh, Galaxy Quest. See it too. Yep. All right, that's going to do it for us. We will be back again. Remember, follow us on Twitter, 151 The Show, or Facebook.com slash 151 The Show. We will see you next time. If you like this video as much as Justin did, please make sure to follow us on these other fine media platforms.